Super Mario Maker has been one of my favorite games of the last 10 years. I guess these days it's actually Super Mario Maker 2. I often conflate the first one, the second one, and the third one, cleverly titled Super Mario Maker 3 DS. The concept was so simple and brilliant, you have to wonder why it took so long to have it exist in the first place. I would have loved this kind of game in the 90s. Even if it wasn't Mario Maker, just 2D Game Maker would suffice. My favorite part isn't actually making the levels. Yes, that's great and a strong number two, but it was the pre-made levels that serve as a model for what your self-made levels can become that I liked best. I suppose these exist to help kids who were born in the 21st century and have never played a 2D Mario game. Certainly, I don't need a primer, though I wish I had kept all those notebooks from sixth grade where my theoretical Mario 3 levels were laid down day after day instead of paying attention in history, science, math, or English class. That reminds me of the worst thing about Super Mario Maker. Kids. The game is overrun with kids, filling up page after page with their junk. Nonsensical level design? Check. Dozens of needless power-ups all over the place? Check. Bizarre sound effects that never existed in Mario to start with at every turn? Check. Incomprehensible level name? Double check. The ones made by adults don't fare so well either, often being impossibly difficult for no reason, or automatic, where you just hit start and watch everything play out. Where's the fun in that? Add to the fact that most of these were made by career YouTubers, which generate thousands of dollars every hour, and it just makes me want to kill myself. There are a few awesome levels out there that have the right design, balance, and nuance that are befitting of a proper 2D Mario game, but it still falls a little short, namely because things like 1-ups are rather useless. You're playing only one stage, not a full game, so that level of excitement when you discover one doesn't carry the same weight as it did all those years ago. Ditto the cards you collect in Mario 3. What I really like are the recreated levels that have been produced over the years by the dedicated faithful. I know playing the world famous 1-1 isn't so exciting the 800 millionth time, but there is something about playing the same old same old in widescreen with improvements and vestigial tales removed. It's a great experience. And that brings me to the second thing I dislike about Mario Maker. The level making tools are tied too closely to the gameplay experience. I mean, it has to. If you're playtesting a new level, you need to jump back and forth to make changes and confirm if it all works. There's no way around it. More than that, there really is no way to produce a full, standalone game that just plays by itself without any interference from menus or loading or saving or whatever. Then it dawned on me. Why doesn't Nintendo just remake all five of the classic 2D Mario games in a style similar to Super Mario Maker and sell them. Yes, of course I know all about Super Mario All-Stars. I made a video about it not too long ago. But this idea really clicked for me after seeing the awesome Final Fantasy Pixel remasters. I don't wanna go too far off track, but simply, this is how it's done. Graphics that look the same but fit a modern TV, as well as auto saves and a lot of backstage stuff you don't need to think about. Just load up the game and go. Reliving all the fun while not repeating the exact same thing you've played 50 times before. So what if Nintendo made Super Mario Brothers Pixel Remasters? Wouldn't that be great? It would be another money printing effort for Nintendo. Not that they don't already have a hundred of those already. Time to lay out the case of what we're missing with this concept not being fully realized. First, the screen. As much as I love old media, be it games, TV, or music, it doesn't work well in the 21st century. The 4x3 aspect ratio is terrible. Sure, it worked great on an old analog TV because, very simply, it filled the entire screen. Using the Nintendo Switch Online game service, you can see the huge black bars take up the left and right side. Nintendo tried to liven it up a little bit, but it's a distraction whether you spruce things up or leave it as is. A pixel remaster would fix the main problem right away by pushing everything to the edge. In both Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2, aka the lost levels, the top screen information would only take up one line of text and there would be lots of room to move around. Another thing that ties into this overhaul is the use of colors. I know that 8-bit games don't have many colors to choose from, but here is where you could 
cheat just a little bit. Take a look at the sky in Super Mario Brothers. It's purple, not blue. In the other 8-bit games, the colors aren't perfect either. I can't blame Nintendo, it was what it was. But compared to Mario Maker and remakes of other older games, these colors look off, washed out, almost like watercolor. Make the sky a nice blue and make every other color a brighter, richer shade. It will look great. Then improve on the existing graphics. A lot of this is already done in Super Mario Maker. Mario has a shadow, as do the enemies, and most foreground graphics, giving everything a more defined, sharp look. The pixels stand out more with that little change. Some of the backgrounds are animated and scroll along with the level. That happened in some cases originally, but are slightly changed in Maker, looking much nicer. There are all kinds of minor tweaks to animation, background, and color that fix many things that were left hanging originally. I argue, and I think you'll agree, a widescreen Super Mario Brothers all gussied up is a must-buy and would find its way onto millions of Switches in no time. Then, fix the glitches. I'm not just talking about the Minus World or the 128 Life Insta Game Over. Those were cleaned up in All-Stars a long time ago. Let's take a look at Mario 3 to start. Despite this being the greatest 8-bit game of all time, there were many things we let slide. Throughout the entire game, part of the screen is clipped. I've never heard anyone complain about this, but how can you not? It's clearly visible and very distracting. Yes, I know, that's just how it had to be. I'm sure if Nintendo could have fixed that, they would have. There are also glitches on the right where some tiles appear the wrong color, and occasionally the scrolling is choppy. Some items are also the wrong color, like fire flowers being blue, and some levels have odd artifacts in the background. Some have said that, again, this is from how the game was programmed and nothing can be done about it. Since everyone and their mother since 1990 has said that Mario 3 is a stage play, I always thought of these as backstage props that aren't in use at the time. Either way, I say get rid of them. Then there's this jumpy line. The three cards should move to the top anyway, so that will remove the split screen automatically. The thing about the original five Super Mario games that can't be ignored is that Super Mario World is the only one in 16-bit, so there aren't many problems in that game, compared to the 8-bit Mario 1, 2, 3, and USA, or 1, 2, 3, and the Lost Levels, if you prefer it that way. However, there are some differences between Japan and the West, such as Yoshi eating dolphins in the Japanese version. Regional changes exist in all of the games, but since I can't think of much that's broken in Mario World, I'll just address it now. Also, the soundtrack could be redone in different ways for each game. Real instruments, remixes, all-star soundtrack, it would be nice to switch it up every now and then, while keeping the original BGM. Don't forget auto-saving and going back to previously played levels. That should be automatic across all games. And while I have been using Mario Maker to prop up many of these arguments, because that game shows how great a remastered Mario would be, it leaves one glaring hole in the series. There is no way to faithfully recreate Super Mario USA. A few elements are there, but since the game is so different from all the others, Nintendo never bothered to include a mode in Maker. Some have tried, but no. It just can't be done. To get a fully remade Mario USA would be awesome, and would go a long way to fill the gap that was left in Mario Maker 2. I could go on for eternity covering every minute detail, but I think you get the point, point. and while nothing is perfect, these changes would be more than enough. So let's wrap it up. How do you sell this game? Well, obviously the eShop. Maybe Nintendo has a policy of making each game available on a card, fine. But to sell the five remastered games for 10 US dollars each, or 50 for the whole set, would be a winner. That's my case for Super Mario Bros. Pixel Remasters. Coming someday to a Switch near you? Well, maybe. If you wish hard enough, the impossible has been known to happen. Oh, and just one more thing. Just like Super Mario Maker, let's have a nice announcement for each title screen. Then these poor misguided children who think B-R-O-S period is pronounced bros will get it right for once. So is this a billion dollar idea or am I just crazy? Would you buy such a game? What would your wish list include? Did I leave anything out? Share your ideas and keep the conversation going.